All right, very excited to be in the Circus Sportsbook for this week's Pro Football Doc podcast with a very special guest here. And I think you'll like this because the reason why I wanted to come to Circa here is all of their NFL draft prop bets that they have. And of course, you guys know by now we have the draft injury analysis. Uh, yes, it's a little bit loud here, but we're in the middle of the sports book here. Um, welcome to the Pro Football Doc podcast here. And I want to welcome in a special guest, Jeffrey Benson, who's uh, what are you, the director of the sports book? Your official title is? Sportsbook Operations Manager. Sportsbook Operations Manager. And uh, vaccinated, so we took our max off in here as we're sitting down with a uh, Diet Coke here. And uh, thanks for uh, joining me here and uh, in-person guest. Great sports book here, thank you. Yeah, we're excited. Obviously the draft uh, is a great event every year. And now that we have the Raiders out here, uh, certainly even more interest. So certainly looking forward to dissecting some of the props that we put up on the board and coming at it from uh, an injury, uh, an odds maker and bookmaker analysis. Now, Circa, you know, pretty new here, but very cool. You got this big sports book here and upstairs, the stadium pool or stadium, what do you call it? Stadium Circa? Yeah, so stadium swims upstairs. Uh, it's got a, you know, 150 foot uh, screen for outdoor viewing. Uh, we're going to have a, a viewing party up there for the draft, uh, as well as here in the world's largest three-story sports book. So certainly excited for uh, three great days of draft coverage and uh, obviously uh, a lot of betting uh, interest as well uh, behind the draft. All right, so multiple options here. The outdoor option, obviously, the, the stadium swim. Very cool uh, up there, very nice, and uh, thanks for having us here. Now, Jeffrey, very interesting here, like, we do at Pro Football Doc, we have a full draft analysis of injuries. But for a while now, you have already put up draft prop bets. Tell us about the prop bets that you have going on here. Yeah, so for us, uh, we last year, obviously, uh, being in the middle of COVID, uh, we, we were able to place a, a pretty large focus um, on our draft menu, given you know most of the sports going on were Cactus Tour Golf, Russian ping pong, things like that. So we were really able to place such a huge emphasis on it last year. Um, and obviously given this year with all the sports back, uh, we wanted to really expand on that. So for us, uh, obviously I know you're holding the packet there in your left hand, but uh, you know, we did a hundred uh, over under uh, draft props for individual players. Uh, and then we did 32 two-sided props in which uh, each team, uh, what each team's first pick will be. Um, and then we did roughly uh, six to eight tournament style uh, offerings. Uh, you know, who, who Kyle Trask will go to, uh, what the Raiders first round pick will be, uh, you know, who will be the third quarterback taken off the board, things like that. Um, and we really think that's generated a lot of uh, betting interest uh, when you look at it across the counter. Oh, I think it's great. And uh, I think it's exciting to be in this uh Mayhem in the sports book here. I think everyone can hear us, and, and uh, thank you for joining us here. <laughs> and and if you look at the Circus sports book, I've been looking through it. The all the draft prospects. I mean, like well over a hundred different things. Yeah, 132 two-sided props, and then like I mentioned before, six or eight uh, tournament-style offerings. Uh, I think when you look across the industry, um, and and you look at other people's menu. Uh, I believe our menu uh, is as deep and as expansive uh, as you'll find in the industry. Um, and then obviously when you look at our limits that we're taking on some of this stuff, uh, the ability to take 1,000 on these openers uh, has something that's been really well received as well. Now, do you have any worry that in theory, some of these picks are known entities? Because for example, inside the 49er building, now obviously gambling is illegal for NFL employees, but they know which quarterback they're drafting, et cetera. So you have, for example, Justin Fields over under at three and a half, basically saying San Francisco is or isn't going to draft him. But in many ways, at least in a small circle of people, that's kind of known what it's going to do. What are your concerns there? Yeah, I think when you look at NFL drafts, it's one of the more niche uh, markets. Um, and when you look across the board in terms of what limits you're going to take, you know, the limits we may take um, on NFL draft props of $1,000, you know, how that would correlate to what we would take on a specific NFL game is going to vary by a pretty large amount. 
obviously with NFL draft props, uh, it's a lot of information. Um, so like I said, the limits that we're going to take on this stuff is not as big as what we would take on a much bigger market. Um, just because it's so information based and it's not going to be something that you see played out on the field. So obviously for us, uh, you know, Justin Fields, um, you know, given that you guys, you know, do a lot of stuff uh, medically, uh, you know, once the epilepsy concerns came out, uh, you saw that the market move very drastically. I believe we opened Justin Fields three and a half under minus two dollars, uh, which implied he was a pretty big favorite to go number three there uh, to the 49ers. Uh, that's moved almost five dollars by the time we took it off the board. Uh, I believe it was uh, three and a half, and the over was minus two seventy. Uh, and then what we ended up doing was opening up a three-way prop uh, in which Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones, uh, who would be the first quarterback off the board of those three. Um, and at this time, I believe Mac Jones was minus one fifty, or maybe a little bit higher. Uh, Justin Fields was the second favorite, uh, and then Trey Lance was a distant third. Yeah, uh, for those of you who've seen the draft injury report that we have at ProFootballDoc.com, we put out that Justin Fields got a lot of attention for his injury at the uh, semifinals with the injection ribs and hip pointer. But he showed his toughness, but that's not an injury that's going to last, and everybody knows that. But I think there was a lot of concern about his epilepsy and seizures, especially with the concussions. And I wrote an article at OutKick saying, look, in the NFL, my time in over 20 years at the NFL Combines, now, admittedly, we didn't have a normal combines this year, but we still had, you know, the we, we had people with epilepsy. Now, I'm an orthopedist. I would rely on neurologists and my primary care guys, but we never really downgraded a guy for epilepsy because, A, if it was a child's disease, you start to grow out of it. If it's well controlled, like Justin Fields has been, even if you're on medication, it doesn't really slow down your thinking. It's not significant risk. And really, I think NFL teams will not change how they look at them at all. So, But it's interesting how you say the numbers actually moved uh, based on the announcement and so forth. And in the end, in terms of what we're doing at Pro Football Doc, I think that's where the advantage is. You can, when lines move or don't move, when there's information, you can look at the medical analysis to help you make your decisions and pounce on favorable numbers. Yeah, 100%. I mean, obviously, when you're dealing with NFL drafts, it's a ton of rumors and smoke screens. Um, and even if, you know, NFL teams aren't going to value that, you know, epilepsy information negatively, you know, I think definitely, you know, for us as, as bookmakers and odds makers, we really have to respect the money that's coming across the counter um, and, and obviously the information. Um, so while NFL teams may not think it's a negative, uh, certainly the betting market uh, has reacted to it being negative. Um, and then I think when you look at it, the correlation um, between Mac Jones under bets and Justin Fields over bets, um, just because only one quarterback is obviously going to go there, number three, and obviously it could still be Trey Lance. But I think the correlation between Mac Jones under uh, and Justin Fields over, and then obviously the epilepsy news uh, has certainly helped to shift those odds in the marketplace. Got it. So really, you set the odds without necessarily – well, you when you set them, you didn't even know all the injury information, and then you try and react to the marketplace. You don't really factor in the injury part here, but you look at it as the market moves. Yeah, I think for us, when we set openers, we're going through mock drafts, we're looking at scouting reports, you know, what, what, what teams and GMs are saying and things like that, and trying to make the best, most informed decision when we set a lot of these openers. Now, you know, we're going to get some numbers right, we're going to get some numbers wrong, you know, for us, that that's not really, you know, we understand we're going to get things wrong, but we're going to let the market dictate where these numbers should go and really book to the numbers um, and, and the money that's coming across the counter. So you have obviously a staff just monitoring as they come in and the news as it's released and then adjusting the odds. And, and like if there's news that comes out, how quickly do you get involved in, in adjusting the odds or, or the process uh, of what happens? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, for us, obviously, in, in the information age we're in, you know, how big you guys are on, on on Twitter, you know, we're obviously watching Twitter, you know, watching, you know, ESPN, a lot of these big uh, news sites to obviously, you know, hear what Schefter and, and, and a lot of these uh, guys in the media are saying uh, about how these draft workouts go and things like that. And obviously, I, I think a great example when you look at injuries and the stuff that you guys do uh, is Terrence Marshall. 
I believe we opened 30, 35 and a half over minus 20 on his draft position. Uh, and early, we took a lot of under money. And I think at one point, we got down to probably 27 and a half, 28 and a half. Uh, and I think the interesting thing there was, you know, once, you know, Daniel Jeremiah tweeted out a lot of the injury concerns uh, about Terrence Marshall, you then saw the over money really come in. So, you know, we may take a bet at 28 and a half. Um, and, and kind of understand where that bet is coming from when you look at what Der Daniel Jeremiah tweeted with regard to his injury concerns. And we may move 10% and go to, you know, 30 and a half uh, or 31 and a half. And then, you know, we're, we're ultimately looking to find some resistance in two way at that number. So, you know, if the next bet is over as well, you know, we may go back to, to 35 and a half. Uh, which was our original opener, and see if we can find resistance or two-way there. So, you know, it's a constant game of moving numbers, trying to get ahead of a lot of these perception-based bets and really kind of target where bettors think this market's going so that we can take the majority of our bets at what we think is the right number. Well, you mentioned Daniel Jeremiah. He's uh, great. He actually lives in the Temecula area nearby and uh, consider him a friend. Actually, no offense here, Jeff. I tried to get Daniel Jeremiah on, and uh, there's no way that man has any time right now, but maybe after. So do you first, Jeff, you, and then uh, maybe next week we'll get Daniel Jeremiah on uh, for his analysis post on uh, on what the draft is. All right, so let's go over some uh, other of these uh, numbers here. Uh, tell me, uh, for example, a couple of the big injury concerns here that we've written about. Look, for quarterbacks, we've already said Dustin Fields is okay. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to be the first pick. Yeah, he can't pass the physical right now because of his left shoulder, but he's going to be the number one pick. There's no question about that. But what about the odds and what you've done, let's say, with uh, Caleb Farley, uh, maybe one of the more talented guys, arguably the most talented cornerback, coming off the two a second back surgery now yeah great great question like i said a lot of the moves early that we've seen have been quarterback unders wide receiver unders uh, but when you look at farley i believe we opened 14 and a half uh, as of early this morning we were sitting at 20 and a half it's really been an onslaught of over money uh, i think betters are reacting to that injury news uh very negatively uh, and they certainly think with his stock uh, and where he's going to slide in the draft uh, that he certainly falls outside of the top 15 and maybe toward the latter half of the back uh, of the first round, uh, given those injury concerns that you mentioned. Yeah, look, I don't know even the draft order of the teams, right? I don't study that. So when you say it's 14 and a half, I don't even know what teams are saying are going to pick them. But I've come out on Twitter and on the site saying, look, it's a second low back surgery, a different level. Once you have low back surgery, you tend to have more. I'm not saying he cannot play football. He's not ready to play football right now. I'm sure he can play football, but I have to think that if there's two athletes that are the same or very comparable, you might have to take Patrick Sertain, the, who's healthier. And, and yes, his agent has done a great job saying he passed the physical. But I've said, uh, Jeff, look, you don't at the combines. First of all, it's a very weird combines this year, a uh, uh, miniature version because of COVID. But I've never told the player you have passed the physical all i do is give a grade so i'm not hating on his agent he's doing his job right trying to pump him up to get him going but and and when you're evaluating players it's not your job to tell him as a patient you're doing fine or you're not doing fine it's just your job to look at him it literally is a little bit of a meat market so to say that doctors have told him or reported it's fine that's just one side of the story I'm not saying he's not fine. I'm just saying from the outside, and I haven't examined him, teams are likely to say if they're same talent-wise, you're safer the other way because let's say once you have two back surgeries on two different levels, you're likely to have a third, right? And when is that going to happen? And so it becomes a value proposition here in terms of what's happening there, in terms of analysis. Yeah, I, I think when you look at the defensive side of things, um, like you said, you know, I think betters are reacting negatively uh, to that injury news. Uh, when you look at where we have odds in terms of the first defensive player drafted, uh, Patrick, Sertain, uh, Patrick Sertain is uh, certainly the overwhelming favorite. Um, Micah Parsons, who obviously sat out last year, lo looks like he'll be the first linebacker off the board uh, for Penn State. Uh, and then the guy who's really seen a lot of action uh, and betting interest uh, is this J.C. Horn uh, cornerback. Uh, he's certainly been somebody uh, who betters are very interested in uh, in terms of first uh, defensive player off the board. 
Um, and then they've also bet him heavily um, in uh, draft position over under uh, to go under. But yeah, like you said, uh, Fairley uh, is definitely uh, moving down the draft board. Um, obviously, you know, you have some injury concerns. Um, and betters are also weighing that information, um, and they bet him under very heavily. And like I said before, he's slipped from 14 and a half uh, to 20 and a half uh, as we stand currently here at Circus Sports in terms of his uh, over under draft position. The other one that through the draft injury analysis that you can go to ProFootballDoc.com and click on the uh, green button and download a PDF version of it, and it's free at the website ProFootballDoc.com is Jalen Phillips. I've got some concern on Jalen Phillips. Look, I'm just once again looking at it from the outside. Totally, when you examine a kid, your opinion can be different. It's just my job to give you my opinion from afar. Now, if I have examined Jalen Phillips, I wouldn't be saying anything about him, Mahipa. So, admittedly, it's analysis from afar. But he was an edge rusher for Miami, was at UCLA, had three concussions in a year. Obviously, it was a red flag with that quit football because of that and then came back and so even if his concussion concerns and multiple concussion concerns are waylaid by teams he actually had it's been reported a proximal row carpectomy which actually is some of the bones in in your wrist at least three bones in the bottom of your wrist removed now admittedly you can be a linebacker or edge rusher and have a cast but are you as effective? And I'm not saying he needs a cast, but there's no question his wrist is not normal. There's arthritis, but it's his wrist. But my question is, A, can he lift and work out as he jumps a level? And teams are gonna wonder that because without that, you're you're not lifting as much. Yeah, there's hands-free workouts and things you can do, but that's a concern. But also a concern is, can is he now only a one-sided player? as opposed to someone that you can flip from side to side, because as an edge rusher, you need a very strong outside hand. And so now does that limit the side in terms of the scheme? And uh, I see as the first, he's very talented, first defensive player drafted, he's plus 2000 now, right? And I think that's indicative of some of those concerns. Yeah, 100%. I think if you look at those odds, they've certainly slid. You know, he may be more in the 30 to 40 range now, given uh, the betting interest for some of those other favorites. But given the position he plays and the medical concerns you just, uh, you know, demonstrated, you know, for a guy who's an edge rusher and is going to utilize the three technique with his hand down on, you know, to to, to come off um, the ball, you know, I I, I certainly think that's something that probably doesn't bode very well. And uh, it, it hasn't been as heavily bet. Uh, as some of the bigger names in terms of those injury concerns. But I think overwhelmingly, when you look at a lot of these draft props um, and guys who do have injury concerns, you know, they certainly tend to slide down the draft boards. um, And and the way bettors react uh, is they're certainly betting them uh, to go over their draft position, uh, not under. Um, And that's what we've seen here in the betting market across the counter at Circus Sports. Awesome. Uh, I love the creativity of betting on the draft and so forth. I love it. Obviously, eventually we're going to get to Super Bowl style player props and in-game player props as, as the marketplace continues to grow. Uh, final question for you here. What do you think is next in terms of creative plays and things in the marketplace? Uh, what do you what do you where do you think it's all going? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I think with the generation we're in, instant gratification uh, is something that's really important. So, you know, I think the trend here in the last couple of years is uh, definitely more prop and player markets uh, and certainly more in-game. Um, you know, I think as the game goes along, you know, people want to continue to bet. Um, and I think obviously pre-game, um, you know, where, where people may not take necessarily an interest uh, on the side or total, uh, certainly betting uh, individual players uh, to do something within that respective sport. Uh, I would say those are probably some of the next things uh, you'll see within the sports betting market. Obviously for us, you know, the, we want to continue to grow our menu, uh, but the things that we do put on our board, we want to offer at very, very high limits. So, you know, for us, um, we continue every day to get better, automate a lot more of our processes similar to what you do. And, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, here in the next couple of years, uh, hopeful that our menu will continue to increase and we'll be able to offer more menu uh, menu things uh, to what our players are looking to bet. Well, I'm certainly very, very impressed with what you got here with the draft pop. So kudos to you. I know some other places are doing it uh, 
too. And, uh, you know, uh, I think this is a very interesting and fluid market here. Uh, thank you very much for uh, spending some time here with you. And uh, you got anything else that you want to talk about? Or are you all good uh, with anything? Uh, give you an open mic? Yeah. Uh, for anybody who's, uh, you know, really interested in betting the, the NFL draft props, uh, they're more than welcome to come down here to Circle Las Vegas. Uh, you know, between the world's largest three-story sports book um, and a fantastic venue out at Stadium Swim, uh, you got two great venues, uh, you know, to watch the draft uh, and, and certainly pull for some of your bets. So, you know, we'd love to have any of uh, the loyal listeners uh, to this podcast out um, and show them a really great time and, uh, you know, have them enjoy the draft here at Circle Las Vegas. And, and no question, Jeff, they've already enjoyed the pictures of uh, Stadium Swim. That's a very impressive uh, thing as we've uh, talked about it here. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for uh, having us here at Circa. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back for part two of a more traditional Pro Football Doc podcast. <laughs>